The Witcher 3 is about to get a whole load of new content in the near future, as for those of you unaware, CD Projekt Red dropped a bombshell last week, showing that they've been working on what all of us PC folk have been wanting for the last several years, that being an official mod editor. Now, there are some caveats I want to discuss in this video, but they announced this over on Twitter stating, we're thrilled to announce that we're working on a mod editor for The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. It will allow you to create your own experiences in the game by making something completely new or editing existing quests and content. We're planning on releasing it for free in 2024. Stay tuned, we'll have more to share next year. So early next year, mod authors should finally have tools more comparable to what CDPR has, allowing them to edit both existing content and quests in the game, but also create entirely new content and quests as well. Now we won't have solid information until next year, but from the sounds of it, it should be quite comparable to the official mod tools for Bethesda Game Studios titles, that being the creation kit. As based on the fact that you can edit or create all new content and quests, makes me obviously assume that there's going to be a world space editor, but maybe it's going to be something more complicated than that and it's not going to be like the creation kit, but we'll have to wait and see. Either way though, this is going to completely change the landscape for The Witcher 3 modding, which has been quite limited for a very long time and is almost exclusively dependent on unofficial mod tools, such as Wolven Kit, for example, which are still very restrictive in comparison to what CDPR can offer with an official mod editor. All you really have to do is take a look at The Witcher 3 Nexus to know that the modding capabilities for this game are being held back significantly, even when compared to Cyberpunk 2077, which is on Red Engine 4. And again, that game also doesn't have a mod editor. And it's made even worse if you compare it to Fallout 4 with all of its content and quest mods, or Skyrim Special Edition with the same. And what makes this even more exciting is how solid the base game is now after the next gen update and all the updates that followed to stabilize it. The game is in a fantastic state now for modding and the fan base is still very strong. So I can only imagine the support it will receive from mod authors when it drops, especially if the mod editor is actually functional, somewhat similarly to Creation Kit, despite all of its stability issues. But I'll be sure to take a deeper dive on the capabilities of the mod editor when CDPR shares more early next year. I'll also cover mods that are released using the mod editor. But of course, not until after I beat the game myself, as I am going to be completely honest. Full disclosure here, I still have yet to beat The Witcher 3. I was playing through it when the next gen update was announced. So I was going to restart it when the update released. Then I was going to wait until the next gen version was more stable. And now that it's at that point, I just need to find the time. So I'll try to get that done before the mod tools drop next year. So I actually know what I'm talking about. Now, I know there's going to be a good amount of console players with the same question. What about console? Will there be any console mod supports? And the answer right now is no. There'll be no console mod support for The Witcher 3, according to CDPR, at least for now. Obviously, as you can see with this video, things can change, but I don't really see console mods coming for this game at any point. And this is understandable as that kind of system is very hard to implement. It's why there are so little games that support such console modding. And the fact that we're getting a mod editor at all for this game is honestly a blessing. But I know it still sucks. But the announcement of a mod editor for The Witcher 3 has me asking a question as well. That being, what about Cyberpunk 2077? And to that, we don't actually have an answer from CDPR right now, but I honestly do feel like that is the inevitable next step for them following this move. It's almost like they wanted to get this done and out first, considering it's an older version of the engine and people have been begging for it long before Cyberpunk came around. So it kind of deserved to get a mod editor first. But I do expect them to hopefully bring a mod editor for Cyberpunk as well. They just seem really into general support of their games, especially as of late, following Cyberpunk 2077's launch. We also know that CDPR works directly with some of the modders behind tools like Wolven Kit, as they were actually hired as a part of the company Yigsoft back in 2021, who have since assisted on development of The Witcher 3 Complete Edition, updates for Cyberpunk 2077 itself, Phantom Liberty, and the introduction of Red Mod for Cyberpunk 2077. So I imagine we'll see stronger mod support in general for CDPR moving forward. Cyberpunk's official mod tools as of right now are almost as limited as The Witcher 3 has been, and despite that, the mod support for the game has been insane in comparison, without red mod taken into account. So I would absolutely love to see what the community could and would do with an official mod editor for 2077. I just question if there's any systems they use for the game that might hold back such tools. 
For example, their use of Jolly, is that something that can be incorporated or is it not? But we'll have to wait and see. Either way, just as a heads up, if you want the smoothest modding experience with either The Witcher 3 or Cyberpunk 2077, and even Bethesda Game Studios games, I genuinely suggest picking up copies over on GOG, that actually being CD Projekt's game store. It's no DRM, no forced updates, and you can even roll back to old game versions. I'm sure you all know by now that forced updates and no rollback support on Steam can make for a very frustrating modding experience. You all make it very clear in the comments whenever Skyrim is updated, and hey, if if you plan on picking anything up on GOG and want to support the channel in the process, you can feel free to use my partner link at the top of the description. Now, surprisingly, that actually wasn't the only unexpected news for The Witcher over the last few days, as The Witcher Enhanced and The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings now officially support Apple Silicon Chips. And that's thanks to updates pushed to both games by CDPR, which adds support for Apple Silicon M1 and M2 chips and macOS Ventura. Very unexpected update for two of their very old games, but a very welcome one for those with that hardware. And for anyone who punishes themselves by playing Destiny 2 in 2023, Bungie also announced a collab with The Witcher this morning. I know you probably didn't see that coming, which will actually be arriving with Season of the Wish on November 28th. And while Destiny 2 has been dead to me personally ever since they started vaulting content I paid for, yes, I'm still salty about it. I do have to admit this collab does look pretty damn cool but that's only really thanks to The Witcher. Now, before I head out, I know I haven't uploaded since my Phantom Liberty review 52 or so days ago. I'm sure a lot of you didn't notice, but some not so great things happened in that time. But I did want to note that you will be seeing quite a bit more of me now. In fact, my next video is on Fallout 4 and it will be going up tomorrow or later today if I'm feeling extra spunky. For now, you can find my Phantom Liberty review and a random video that YouTube thinks you might enjoy on screen now. But that's it for this video. Thanks as always for watching, and until next time, this is Epoxy, signing off.